let's say he's worthy of the glory. I need somebody that came to give him glory on this quiet hour. That why you can look back over your life from January 2015 all the way to December headed into another year that he kept you and I need somebody here that was on the verge of giving up on the verge of throwing in the towel but God made a way out of no way and if that's you in the house can you just give him not me but can you just give him what he deserves listen I don't even I don't even deserve to be here but the songwriter said when I think of the goodness of Jesus I need about three people that can think of three things that he's done for you or one thing he's done and take 30 seconds, open up your mouth right where you are and just not, I, 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 I need you to give me an old-fashioned prayer. Somebody says, well, why, 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 why are you saying give him a prayer? But the Bible says, let everything somebody in here that's not on life support you're not hooked up to a respirator but when you put your hand in front of your face you can feel some air I tell you to get up on your feet and give my God throw your weed back over up your mouth and give him a praise in this crowd wait 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 I need somebody here that got two good things I just left a rehab. My wife had bilateral knee replacement. And there were some people in there that could not walk on their own. But if you got two good legs and the activities of your limbs are working, reach over and touch somebody on your left or your right and say, if it had not been for the Lord. Chronicles, yeah. 
chapter 20, verse 15. And the word of the Lord says, And he said, Hearken ye, or listen ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. And thy king, Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you. Be not afraid. Lord have mercy. Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God. I want to talk to some worshipers and tell you the battle is not yours, but God. See, 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 see. The reason you're singing is not because you're so gifted. The reason that you're singing is not because you've been so good. But is there anybody in here know that the reason you're singing is because all of the wrong that you've done. There is a but God in your life. I need some folk that understand that I would have been on my way to hell but God. I, I wouldn't have been in Shreveport tonight but God. I would have lost my mind when I was in the midst of the storm but I ran into a but God. And, and there's some folk in here that if you tell the truth, you 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 know it was just yesterday when you were you were you were sharing uh, egg sandwiches and you were trying to make ends meet. But baloney, fried baloney, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, fried baloney. But but God, and when God get in it, Lord have mercy. How many know He has a way? of turning things oh, yeah. around. Oh, yeah. Shuck it, duck it, quack, quack. He has a way of causing things that look like they're getting ready to fall apart. He has a way of bringing them together. As we look at our text, we understand that Jehoshaphat is getting ready for battle. Realizing that the enemy has come against him. And how many know if you worship God and you are a worshiper and you are a singer, how many know you will always be encountered with a battle? No matter where you are, who you are, no matter what your last name is, you will always be dealing with something. But the reason that uh, the anointing is strong. Uh, the reason that God brings you from grace to grace and victory to victory is because most folk see the glory. But they don't know your story. Uh, if, if they knew your story, they would not be waiting for you to praise him. But if they knew your story, they'll be praising him for you. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. Uh, Y'all ain't feeling me. If you knew what I had to go through to get here, you wouldn't be waiting on me to tell you to lift your hand. If you knew what I had to go through in order to get into the presence of God, if you knew what happened to me as a child, if you knew who left me, if you knew who dropped me, if you knew who walked out of my life. But the reason you don't know, the reason you don't know, is because I don't look like 
what I've been through. <laughs> Is there anybody in here that you got the wounds under the skirt, under the makeup, under the clothes, under the weeds, under the hairdos and hair don't? You got the scars to prove that you've been to hell and back, but you don't look like, I need three people in here, y'all ain't feeling me in here, but if you don't look like what you've been through, I need somebody that can lift your hand and give God some glory, and because I don't look like what I've been through. When you look at Jehoshaphat, I gotta, I gotta hurry on. When you look at Jehoshaphat, when you look at him here, he is encountered, encountered by the Moabites and the Ammonites. And they are getting ready to come up against him. And because they are getting ready to come up against him, there is fear that sets in yeah, yeah, yeah. his life. Yeah. And have you ever been getting ready for a task yeah. and the task looked bigger than you? Yeah. Have you ever been getting ready for a job and the job looked bigger than you? Yeah. And you didn't know how you was gonna make it through? Yeah. It looked like you would fall or you would oh, fail yeah. in the assignment. Oh, yeah. But the fact understood that if I'm going to make it in this battle, he said, I got to get some outside help. Can I talk to some worshipers? Listen, one of the things that you cannot do as a worshiper, as a singer, you got to understand that God has put you in position because he's placed you on assignment. And because he placed you on assignment, it is your preparation for the assignment that he placed you on that will give you a peak performance. I'll say it again. It's preparation for what the, what the assignment is that you're doing that gives you peak performance. How, how do I know it? Because if you never rehearse, you could never hit the notes. If, if you never if you never came to practice and made some mistakes, then you would never know what was right. But what we do is once we begin to perfect one side of what we're doing, we become complacent where we are. Ah, oh, Lord, have mercy. Once we perfect, uh, may, we may know three runs and we think we got it. And so we stay right where we are. But how many know it's funny that God always uses something different when he's getting ready to prepare us for battle. It's funny how God will take uh, uh, he'll take a little shepherd boy by the name of David. And it's funny how David will go up against a big old giant named Goliath. And Goliath looked like uh, he, he, he was uh, prepared for battle. He looked like he was intimidating. He, he looked like he could rip David apart. But David said, you come with a spear and a sword. He said, but I'm coming with something that's powerful than your spear and your sword. He said, I come in the name. Lord, have mercy. I wish I had somebody here that know that when you use the right stuff, why don't you tell somebody say, you can't use, you can't lose with the stuff that we use. Because you understand when you come with the right stuff, listen, you But if you don't have no bullets, how do you know that gun ain't no good? But if you have a weapon and you have been trained how to use your arsenal, how do you know when you get in battle, you get ready to cause something to fall apart? So David understood it does not matter how big my target is. Does not matter how big of my opposition is. I know that I'm getting ready to walk into a bigger opportunity. Lord have mercy. See somebody here worrying about what you're going through, but instead of worrying about what you're going through, you ought to be looking ahead of what God's getting ready to bring you to. Is there anybody here understand that where you're going is better than where you've been? Is there anybody here that understand that God is getting ready to take you higher? You don't have to wait on no feeling or anything. You can praise Him in advance. So, so, it is that Jehoshaphat 
understood that if I'm going to win the battle, can I talk to the word team just for a moment? I'm gone. If I'm going to win the battle, and I'm going to win with the weapon, how many know worship is a weapon? Yeah. That God has given us yeah. to defeat the, yeah. the enemy. Yeah. And in order to worship him, we must speak well of him. Yeah. Worship is to speak well of the Lord. And so if we're going to defeat the enemy with worship, one of the things that had to happen, uh, I know y'all thought I had left y'all, but I'm going to bring it back. If you're going to defeat the enemy with worship, you got to understand your worship has to be connected to a word. If you're going to win, now I don't care how melodious your voice is. If there is a disconnect between the worship and the word, then it's of no effect. Your worship has to be connected with a word. Because when Jehoshaphat was in doubt, the Bible says what he did is he prayed. And what he did is he called the fast. But it wasn't until the word came to Jehazah. And the word came and he told them what to do. See, when Pastor Gant gave the word, see, you can't be an effective worship member if you're not under the word. You know? If you if you sing it and you're not on the word, guess what you're doing? You just make it known. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, because it's the word that gives you power. Yeah, yeah. I wish I had somebody here. Yeah. See, understand that he did not go into the battle until he got a word. Yeah. See, it's the word that's gonna give you the stamina and the history that you need to sustain when you get on the battlefield. And so when Jehoshaphat prayed and he called the fan and all everybody had the fan, they said, listen, well, 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 he said, this is what you need to do. And he gave them a word. He says, now, the word is this. I know you're getting ready for battle. He says, but instead of doing it the way that most folk would do it, don't worry about getting a shield. Don't worry about getting a sword. He says, I know most folk will get a weapon. He says, but I'm looking for some worshipers. So what they did, they put a choir together. Because God said, I'm getting ready to do something different than already been done. Y'all ain't hear me in here. The reason that you're going through what you're going through is because God's getting ready to use something that hadn't been used. He's getting ready to do something different with you that hadn't been done. And so he says, align the worshipers. Get together quietly. He says, and when they get together and they begin to lift their voices and give God praise. How many know the Bible says he says to them, hear me. Hear the word of the Lord. He said, you will not have me to fight in this battle. I want to give you three things and I got to go. Number one, he says to them, if you're going to be a great worshiper, and if you're going to have a but God in your life, he says, you have to stay focused. Simply yeah. because if you're going to hear the word, it's going to be through a focus. All right? And then if you're going to win the battle, you got to understand that it don't even belong to you. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I get a witness here? See, because if you think it belongs to you, you go ask Moses. Moses says to God when God tells him to go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh, I said let my people Moses says, well who, who am I to tell Pharaoh send me God said tell him I am and I need somebody here that know that I am and still alive and well so when you face your opposition your red sea that will not part, you can look at it and say I am sent me and when I am shows up, how many know things that have closed up are getting ready to open up. If there anybody here understanding your worship will cause things to open up if you use I am in the right way. So, not only do you have to be focused, the next thing is you got to understand that the fight you're in is fixed. Yeah. 
Have you ever heard of somebody throwing the fight? Six simply means no matter how many times you get hit. Matters not how hard you get hit. Look at somebody and say, you may knock me down, but you won't knock me out. I need some worshipers that's been hit in here before and it almost traumatized you. I need somebody that's gone through something that almost rendered you hopeless and helpless. But is there anybody in here that can look at your name and say, when the smoke clear and the dust settled, I was still standing. Is there anybody here that said, my name ain't Beyonce or neither am I Destiny's child? But look at somebody and say, I'm a survivor. Is there any survivors in the house? They went through some stuff. They went through some hit. They went through some stuff that almost knocked you down. They knocked you down, but did knock you out. If that's you, can you lift your hand and give God some glory? You can somebody and say, baby, I'm going to praise him because I don't look like What I've been through. Not only do you have to be focused. Not only do you have to know that the fight that you're in is fixed, but lastly, not leastly, you have to be willing 